Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. We've got the Lisa Longball Golf Town International Women's Day Clinic starting in two minutes. So hopefully you're going to be joining me here. Can't wait. We thought we'd give two minutes for all the guests to join in and log in so that when we start right at 7 p.m. Eastern, we can hit the ground running. So can't wait for all of you. If you're, if you're already here, throw your name in the chat. Tell me where you're from. I'd love to hear uh, who's on the chat, who's trying to learn some golf, who's getting ready for the spring. Can't can't wait to hit some balls, give you some great tips so you can hit it longer, straighter, better. Ooh, I see people here. This is awesome. Golf Town. Hey, great to see you here, Golf Town. So fun. It, Golf Town is so excited about doing this. Golf Town and I were chatting and uh, we were saying, we got to do something cool for uh, International Women's Day. Celebrate women. So that's what today's for. So we're super, super excited. Awesome. Very fun. So looking forward to seeing everyone. For those of you who don't know, I'm actually based in my hometown, uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Gwen, I see that you've joined us. Hello, hello, hello. Missy from Florida. Jealous. I could use some palm trees. I can see snow out my window right now. Oh, I've got Renee from New Brunswick. Hello, hello, hello. I've got Demi coming in from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. I did two golf towns in Saskatchewan in the fall. Loved it there. Loved it. I've got Lisa. Hey, Lisa from Toronto. You're always so awesome. We'll come to my golf town stuff. Heather from San Francisco. I did an event in San Francisco in September. What a beautiful, beautiful city. Flying into there. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. I see Jane's on there. Hey, Jane. And Doris. Hello, Doris. Michelle from Trenton, Ontario. Oh, Prince Edward Island. Donna, you've come to join us. I'm going to be out in Prince Edward Island this July supporting the Boys and Girls Club. Nashville, Tennessee. Kelly, you live in one of the coolest places. I love Nashville. I love Nashville. But that's because I got a little country in me from living in Calgary, Alberta. Cape Town South Africa. Michelle, thank you for joining us. And Leslie, so happy that you're back to here to see me again. Karen from Vermilion, Alberta. You know I'm an Alberta girl. Andrea, I was just in Edmonton on Friday. You had a lot of snow. Not happy about that. Not happy about that. Shirley from Ottawa. Love this. Red Deer. Lori, my son Luke was just called up to the Red Deer Rebels on Friday and he scored his first goal, his first WHO goal. And guess what? Ron McLean put his goal on Hockey Night in Canada on Saturday night. So for any of our Canadians out there, you'll know what a big deal to be it is to be on Hockey Night in Canada. So my son was over the moon. Oh, Bridget, bonjour from Quebec. Hello, hello. And uh, oh, Diane from Minnesota. Oh, Sue from Arizona. I'm leaving tomorrow to Arizona. I'm not coming to Tucson, sadly, where you live, but I'm going to Phoenix. And Shelby from Vancouver. This is awesome. And Rosetta from Regina. Edwina from Austin, Texas. And Helen from Winnipeg. Emily, hey. She's living out there on the way to Whistler. Absolutely gorgeous where uh, Emily lives. So ladies, thank you for everyone who joined me and if gentlemen are here too the more the merrier because this clinic today this clinic is to celebrate women it is international women's day on uh, this friday march 8th and what is international women's day about it is a day to celebrate women to celebrate how fabulous women are how how creative how strong how smart and most importantly it's a day to lift women up to help women because ladies those are the women that we want to be so golf town and i decided what can we do that can help women out as we're heading into this spring and golf season? And we thought, heck, let's do a clinic. Let's do a clinic to help women get ready for the spring so that they can play their best golf. Just want to say hi, Jennifer from California, Sharon from Miramar Beach, Florida, and Cheryl from Colorado. Oh my goodness, so wonderful everyone's joined us. So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to chat a little bit about uh, ladies golf and how we can make you find your best place in golf this year and also how to make your game better so that you can hit the ground running uh, when you're playing. Although I see a couple of you are from, from, from some sunny states, so you're already playing golf. Us uh, northerners, northern U.S. and Canada, we're jealous of that. So this is what we're going to do. Ladies, here's my throw out to you. If, if, what, I want you to do something different. Go outside of your comfort zone this year in golf. For instance, if you have never played in a competition before, think about it. Try potentially joining a tournament at a local golf course near you. Sign up. Now, to do that, you would probably need a handicap. So, heck, we might even have to go one step back. Maybe this is the year that you keep a handicap. For, uh, through, it's, it, and through Golf Canada, there's a wonderful handicapping uh, system that you can use there for a very nominal fee. USGA also has that. All the associations around the world have a way for you to track your handicap. I think it's a great way to start. It just for 
for you, just for your knowledge. And do something that you've not done yet in golf this year. That's how you're going to push yourself in golf. So if you don't have a handicap, maybe you start there. If you do have a handicap, try entering your first tournament if you haven't done that. If you are entering tournaments, maybe you can find a club championships or, or try to push yourself to the next handicap level. Give yourself a goal this year, ladies. Find a goal that you want to reach and achieve this year to help push your game. I have to tell you, I was a 30 plus handicap, couldn't break 100 to save my life. What brought me to the next level is I signed up for my first competition through Alberta Golf, which is my provincial association, and it was for the high handicap golfers. But ladies, I had to read that rule book. I had to practice, 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 uh, get out there, learn how to learn how to take those tough shots, and it, it taught me how to pray, play under pressure. It pushed me. I did that, and that's what pushed me into long drive, and since then, I've become an eight-time Canadian long drive champion. The highest place is second in the world. I lost by three yards to phenomenal Sandra Carl bird from Sweden. The Swedes, the Swedes, they got me, they got me that time. But uh, again, that's what pushed me. So I highly encourage you, if you don't have a handicap, give it a try. If you haven't entered a competition, go for it and try. If you have entered a competition, can you go to the next level? So if it was the mid handicap, can you go to the amateur? How can you push your game this year? Another great piece of advice I have for ladies. Ladies, if you're relatively new to this game or you don't have a lot of people out there in your community that you have to play with, join a league. Start looking now, especially if uh, those of you who are in Canada and maybe those northern states as well. Um, I'm assuming leagues go year round in those sunny states and sunny countries that those of you who are golf thing as we as we speak but um look at leagues now look for league play call around to your golf courses if you're not a member join a league you will find like-minded people um or and other maybe people who are at your skill level that new friends and i promise you you will start to make lifelong friends there if you have a friend to go with great if you're on your own give it a try i promise you you'll enjoy it if you haven't taken lessons i'm going to share with you tips today that i've learned from my phenomenal pga of canada instructors my instructor is paul Horton out of Calgary, Alberta, but please take a lesson. If you've never taken a formal lesson, take a lesson. That's another thing you can do. Find a, a professional, professional uh, golf, uh, golf instructor to give you the best tips. Now, ladies, one last tip before we get started into the clinics. Ladies, we got to shut down. We got to shut down that advice because here's the deal. The worst thing that happens to women golfers and female golfers on the golf course is that we tend to get advice, unsolicited advice from people on the golf course. And you know what? It gets in our kitchen. So I'm going to talk to you about some bits of those terrible pieces of advice. And I'm going to share that with you, uh, how we can battle that. And here's the thing. You're going to find out what the good advice is. But when someone gives you a bad piece of advice, if we don't shut it down, it's going to get in your kitchen. So here's the deal ladies, two things that you're going to do. If anyone gives you advice on the golf course this year and it's unsolicited, you haven't asked, oh, what am I doing wrong? If you haven't done that, because don't do that because that's going to just ask for it. But if people start giving you advice on the course and it's really bugging you, here's one of two response. You can say, hey, uh, Barbara, what is it that you said you did for a living? Oh, you're a geologist. Good. Let's keep it that way. Ladies, we wouldn't go into a dentist office and start teaching the dentist how to give a root canal. Why do regular golfers think they can start giving tips on the course? Even if they're a low handicap golfer, unless they're a PG of Canada, PG of America, or any of our PG of professionals around the world, they don't know what they're talking about necessarily. They might be given the wrong piece of advice. Their heart's in the right place, but it's the wrong piece of advice. Now, a more polite way to say it, if someone's giving you advice on the course and they won't stop, I want you to do this. I want you to say, oh, uh, Joe, thanks so much for the tip. I appreciate that. You know, but however, I'm working with a golf coach and my golf coach has asked me to not take advice because we're working on a few things. So thanks so much. And if, you, if anyone asks who your golf coach is, if you haven't met a PGA of Canada or a PGA of, U, of America instructor or wherever you may be, you can say, well, Lisa Longball's my golf coach. So I'm your golf coach and your golf coach says no taking instruction. Uh, on the golf course, okay? So shut that down because I promise you if that person will continue to give you advice for the rest of the round and it will ruin your round. So get out there, get in leagues, join competitions, get, get a handicap. But heck, you know what? The most important thing is there, get outside, get out, have fun, be out there with your friends and families. Oh, one more thing I'm going to ask you out there. If there's anyone in the working world out there that potentially may get an invitation to a corporate or charity golf tournament, please say yes. Because you know what? I do a lot of golf entertaining at corporate and charity golf tournaments. And you know what I see? 75 to 85% of the attendees are guys. And where are the girls? 
Well, guess where the girls are? Back in the office doing the work while the guys are smartly doing the networking. Ladies, here's the thing. As women, we don't like to do things poorly, okay? And we especially don't like to do things poorly in front of our male counterparts. So what do we do? We say no. But you know what? Here's the secret. Here's the secret. No one cares how good your golf swing is. No one cares if you hit it two bills or you're knocking it four inches from the pin. You know what they care about? Here are the rules. If you go to a corporate or charity golf tournament, here are your rules. Be fun. Be fast and have etiquette. So meaning don't talk in someone's backswing, turn your phone ringer off, stuff like that. But if you are fun and you are fast and you know you, you, you are follow the general rules of etiquette, I promise you everyone will want to be your golf partner. And usually at these corporate and charity golf tournaments, uh, it's a scramble format. So really, it doesn't matter. All people care about, let's keep the pace, let's have fun and get out there and have a great time. So I challenge you, if you are uh, getting that invite to a corporate or charity golf tournament, you say yes. You say absolutely, I'm going to be there. And Usually there's some great prizes for ladies for closest to the pin, long putt, long drive. Heck, I've been known to take a ball in water draw, a ball in sand draw. No shame in that. There's a prize. There's a prize. So ladies, do that this year. I just want to say hi, Laura from Barbados. Okay, I know you're golfing. How jealous am I? Jennifer, I love it. Network on the course. Absolutely. People do business with people they know, like, and trust. Would you rather a one-hour lunch with your client or customer or four hours on the golf course? I promise you, it's all about the connections, and those connections are built on the golf course. Carrie, I'm thrilled you love my videos. Nancy from Boston. I just saw Morgan Wallen in Boston last July at Fenway Park. Oh, you have a great city. You have a great city. And hello from Mary from Puerto Vallarta because she doesn't want to be in Ontario right now. Love it. Okay, let's get down to the clinic. Today, we're going to talk about some essentials because I don't want to keep you too long. So we've got about 20 more minutes. I want to talk to you about, we're going to go grip, posture. These are two things that can absolutely help you tomorrow in your golf game. Then we're going to talk about my three keys that are absolutely essential for golf. And, uh, and then we've got, guess what? A prize. Look at this. Oh, what does this happen to be? Oh, hello, brand new driver. Oh, hello, Callaway Paradigm AI Smoke. Oh, who are you? Well, we'll talk about this little bad boy a little bit later. Uh, this is going to be our prize, compliments of Callaway Golf. So huge thank you to Callaway Golf, who's my sponsor. So absolutely thrilled that we're going to be giving one of these beauties away to one of our viewers. So we'll talk to you about the contest deals in a moment. Uh, all right, let's get down to the clinic. All right, let's start with grip. Now, ladies, this is one of the biggest things with grip, all right? I'm all about processes. And my American friends always tease me because I think they say process, but I say process. Why? It makes you look like a pro. So let's talk about some processes. Number one, if you look at the bottom of every grip, it has a cap or a line on it somehow, all right? So I want you, here's the deal. In your glove hand, I want you to be able to see the butt end of the grip always between on, on the um, underneath your glove hand. So kind of under the pudgy part of your hand there. What do a lot of people do? A lot of people end up burying the butt end of their, their uh, of the club into their glove, glove hand here. Now it feels great. The problem is it can turn that club face at the top of your backswing. And if you're sitting there going, huh, do I do that? Do you get that wear mark? Do you get a big wear mark rip on your glove and have to replace it quite often or get a hole? It tells you you're not holding your grip right. So here's the two best things I can teach you for, for doing that. So number one, we want to get that cap underneath the pudgy part of our glove a hand. Then we're going to stand arms beside us. You want to hold the club in your glove hand. I want you to bend your knees. Pretend you're picking up a briefcase or suitcase. How would you pick up the handle of a briefcase or suitcase? You wouldn't pick it up in the, in the center of your hand. You would pick it up in the base of your fingers. So arms hang naturally, but hand is showing. Pretend you're picking up a briefcase or suitcase. Take your non-glove hand, put the base of the fingers, put it in the base of the fingers, and then you're gonna wrap it over. There's three types of grip. The baseball or 10 finger, that's awesome. Or what we call the overlap, where the pinky of the non-glove hand goes between the middle finger and the index finger, and that's fine too. Or there's the interlock, where the pinky goes in between the middle finger and the index finger on the glove hand and folds over. All three grips are excellent. It's whatever is most comfortable to you. Uh, any, uh, if I've got any parents or grandparents out there and you're teaching juniors, I probably recommend the 10 finger or baseball grip. I uh, just don't allow, especially any of you who have hockey players out there, I uh, just don't allow them to separate 
their hands because that would that leads to poor technique. Make sure their hands stay nice and tight. And uh, ladies, I promise you, if you do this, you are going to have better contact and better and better grip. So this is something that you can easily work on. Just make sure that butt end is showing and bend those uh, uh, legs to pick it up. Pick up the handle of the club. You're like you're picking up a briefcase or suitcase. That would be awesome. Uh, Michelle Walma. Oh my gosh, you've come to my Lisa Longbow Golf School in Prince Edward Island. So awesome that you've joined us. Because guess what? Learning never ends, ladies. We can always come back and get refreshers. And that's what this clinic is for. Some great tips for spring so you can hit the ground running this year, all right? Ah, uh, 10 finger grip is a new one. Terry, it's really great for people who have small hands. So take if you have short fingers, take a peek at it. You might really like the uh, the 10 finger grip. So if you Google it online, or of course, see your PJ of Canada, PJ of America Pro to, to really show you. But just to get a sense of it, you'll find it online. All right, that's number one for grip, the most important. Next, I'm going to talk about the second part of the grip, and that is grip pressure. And this can help some of you today. Ladies, if you are a slicer, so what is a slicer? That's hitting the ball right for a right-handed golfer, left for a left-handed golfer. If that's your miss, one of the things that could you could be doing wrong is grip pressure. Ladies, on a scale of one to 10, you should only be about a three, maybe a four at the very most in how tightly you hold the golf club. And really, it should be a looser type grip, a kind of a, again, as I said, three or four on the scale. Really, at any point in, in your swing, I should be able to kind of pull the club out of your hand. Uh, Sam Sneed, famous old school golfer, referred to holding the club as if you're holding a small bird in your hands. Well, most of us haven't held a small bird, but I think of holding it as an open pop can or an open tube of toothpaste where you don't squeeze out the out the toothpaste. I find we're good at setup. We're good through takeaway. Where the issue is when we initiate the downswing, that's when the diff grip comes in. Well, guess what the death grip does? First of all, it makes your muscles really tense. Guess what? Tense muscles are not fast muscles. Loose, supple muscles are fast muscles. So ladies, if you want distance, tight muscles is the worst thing that you can do. It's going to kill your distance and... If you have a tight grip pressure, guess what? As you swing through the club, it's going to open your club face. If your grip is too tight, it won't allow your club face to what we call square up, which should, this is what your club face should be like an impact. But if it's like this, you're going to slice it all day long. So if you're a slicer, one of the biggest fixes you can do, relax your grip pressure. Two ways I can teach you to relax your grip pressure. Number one, and do this with me right now. Everyone take a deep breath out. Did you feel your shoulders drop, the tension from your arms and hands drop? Awesome. Every single time before you make a full swing, I do this with all my clubs. You should watch me if I'm golfing or watch me if I'm ever competing at the World Long Drive Championships. You'll see this. Very last move before my takeaway, deep breath out. And then I initiate my backswing. If that still isn't working, what you can do is squeeze your grip really tight, then relax it. So squeeze tight, relax it, deep breath out, go. Do, do one or both of those things, and I promise you, you will lighten your grip pressure, hit it farther, and hit it straighter. All right, let's talk about posture. Ladies, four step, I'm all about process, because why? All of us are looking for consistency. We find we hit a couple good shots there, a couple good shots there, but it's not consistent. So here's the thing, if you do the exact same thing every time, whether it be with grip, whether it be with posture, ball position, whatever it may be, I promise you, you will be more consistent more often and hit better shots. So, oh, I see Diane says that the breathing is a big part of her routine. Diane has also come to my golf school. Thrilled to see you there, Diane. All right, so again, super important to have processes. So ladies, here's the process for posture. It's a four-step process. Step number one, you have to be nice and tall, okay? Well, I want you to stand nice and tall. Why? Because we need to have a straight flat back. One of the worst things for those of you who are looking for distance is hunchy shoulders. And those of you who have desk jobs or just kind of naturally slump a little bit, when you set up into your golf posture with a slump, what it does is it restricts your turn. When you have slumpy shoulders, look how hard it is to turn. When you have a nice straight flat spine, look how easy it is to turn. I'm going to show you what's the easiest way to gain distance Make, make as big of a turn as possible. It's about, it's about coil and torque, and that happens with a straight flat back. So step number one, just simply stand up nice and tall. Step number two, are you ready? Bow at the waist, butt sticks out. This is huge. Bow at the waist, butt sticks out. What do I see from a lot of women? Somewhere along the way, a lot of women have received the advice, oh, you want to sit down. You want to pretend like you're sitting in a stool or sitting on a chair. Remember that bad advice I told you on the golf course? Nope, that's one of them. Get it out of there. Ladies, I'm going to talk to you about brushing the grass, 
Okay, I'm going to talk to you about the importance of brushing the grass, okay? How the heck are you supposed to brush the grass when your girls are facing this way? If your girls are facing this way, you have no hope of brushing the grass. So if you're sitting in a chair or stool, you can't brush the grass. So again, ladies, here's another way to think of it. Are you ready? Girls to the ground. Girls to the ground. That's how we're going to brush the grass. I'm going to give you a great little reminder. I was recently uh, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I was teaching a golf clinic and we were outside, and it was funny because I ended up seeing this, well, it's um, an adult store van. We'll call it that, an adult store van uh, for, for a shop that was nearby. And we were kind of giggling, and I was giggling about what could possibly be in that van. And we laughed, and then I said, oh, I bet I know what's in that van, tassels tassels. And I said, if I went and bought tassels, Donna's got it right there. If I went and got tassels, that's exactly right. If I put tassels on everyone, I want your tassels to be hanging straight down. Why? Because tassels are way more fun when they're hanging straight down. No one wants droopy tassels. Droopy tassels aren't fun. We want tassels that hang down. So for those of you who are visual learners, you want droopy tassels, we don't do no droopy tassels, we want them hanging down or girls to the ground. Super important because otherwise you cannot brush the grass. Do not sit in that stool. So step number one, stand tall. Step number two, bow at the waist, butt sticks out. Do not sit in the stool, butt sticks out. Step number three is simply crack your knees, not bend your knees, just crack them. And step number four is huge. Are you ready? Arms hang naturally. You want your arms to hang like ropes from your shoulders. What, for many of you who struggle with consistency, I can fix this today with this move right here. Watch what happens. A lot of people, when their ball, so when their ball is down, okay, their ball is down, and they go to set up in their posture, all right, they go to set up in their posture, and they go down, but the ball is over there, what do they do? They reach, they reach. Do you see this gap? Do you see this gap between my skirt and my hands? It should only be about a fist width. So when your arms are hanging naturally like ropes from your shoulders, it's only about a fist width between your butt end of your club, your skirt, your shorts, your pants. But as soon as that ball's further away, or especially if you use a longer club like a driver, look at the distance. If you have this big distance, you're going to be completely inconsistent. Why? Because the body is a miracle. What happens is when you swing, when you swing and you get back down to impact, at impact, your body is looking for neutral. This is neutral, arms hanging from the shoulders. So if you start with your arms way out here, way more than a fifth width, so you've reached out instead of, instead of letting your arms hang naturally, then what happens if you start out here, when you come back to the ball, it's a wing and a prayer whether you'll actually hit the ball. So it is so important you let your arms hang like your shoulders. And whether you are using a driver or whether you're using an iron, it's the exact same thing. Stand up nice and tall, bow at the waist, butt sticks out, Arms lie hang like ropes from my shoulders. That's where I hold driver. That's where I hold my irons. It's all a, butt, a fist width between my butt end of my club and my scort short pants. It is huge. You'll love that, okay? Now, the last question I get, ladies, this is important. Women say to me, Lisa, is it arms above the girls, below the girls? What do I do with the girls? Where do I put my arms? All right, I can talk about this because I got girls. So, ladies, here's the deal. I have heard, oh, oh, it's above the girls. Well, gosh, ladies, if you're a B, C cup or any higher than that, you're going to be choking on your shoulders up here if it's above the girls. I've heard, no, 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 it's below the girls. It's below the girls. Ladies, that's a push-up bra commercial. It's not the below, the below the girls. I've also heard, oh, no, 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 it's one above, one underneath. Well, ladies, that's a mammogram. I want you to all get them, but not on the golf course, okay? So what's the key? What's the, what, what do you need to do? Ladies, here's the key. You have to let those arms hang naturally from your shoulders. And then here's the problem. 80% of women uh, struggle hitting it over 200 yards. I believe every one of you, you know, barring any injury or as we advance in age, but that you can hit it over 200 yards, two bills. I believe you can with your good technique that I'm going to show you. But it's important. Here's the deal. But the, the important thing to do that, what do women do incorrectly? Women, we tend to be more flexible than our male counterparts. So what we do, we typically start our backswing with our hands or with our arms. So what do we do there? All we do is what I call lift the arms. If you just lift the arms, guess what? No coil, no torque, no power. You think you're in a good position. If you took a picture at the back, the top of the backswing, you'd be like, look how great this is. But guess what? You haven't turned one bit. All you've done is lift your arms and all you can do is drop them. And you're going to hit it 150 yards straight down the pipe all day long, but you're, and, but you're never going to hit it any longer. And if you're sitting there going, huh, am I an arms lifter? 
Ask yourself, do you hit your eight iron as far as your seven iron, as far as your six iron? You're an arms lifter. That's okay, because we can fix that today. So how do we fix it? And that leads to our next most important point. And that is, we've got to get, we have to start our backswing with our lead shoulder. This is the key to starting the backswing, is the lead shoulder. Just before I talk to you, Susan, thank you for saying that you've missed me. I appreciate that. Ronnie, love your kind note. Thank you, Carol. I love that you're giggling. And Debbie, you know it's coming, baby. Turn the shirt, turn the pants. Turn the shirt, turns the skirt. And uh, Laurel, thank you for your kind words about my energy. All right, so let's go into the, how do we fix it? How do we fix arms lifting, which kills our distance? The very first move, ladies, once you've done your four-step process to posture, stand up nice and tall, bow at the waist, butt sticks out, crack the knees, arms hang like ropes from your shoulder, deep breath out. And what's the very first move in your, in your backswing? Lead shoulder. So right-handed golfers, that's your left shoulder. Your right-handed golf, sorry, right-handed golfers, that's your left shoulder. Left-handed golfers, it's your right shoulder. So basically, it's the shoulder closest to the fairway, to where you're going. So you start your backswing, not with your hands, not with your arms, with your lead shoulder. If you do that, you can't help but turn. Okay, so turn the shirt. That's how we're going to do that. Now, right before we get into our turn the shirt, turn the skirt, I told you there's three things that I, 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 I want you to leave today's clinic with other than our grip and posture. Here's number one, and we've already teased it, which is brush the grass. Ladies, you are not going to hit a good golf shot, irons, hybrids, fairy woods, or driver even, if you don't brush the grass. What is brush the grass? Ladies, see this golf swing right here? That's a pretty good looking golf swing if I do say so myself. But guess what? That ball is going to go one foot off the ground. Why? Because I didn't brush the grass. Ladies, you can have the most beautiful swing in the world, but if you don't brush the grass, the ball won't work. What makes clubs work, every single club has different amount of loss. That's why they all have all the different numbers on it. It should be ballpark about um, 10 yards ballpark for each club, you know, depending on your swing. That's what's so important. But you, it, the only way clubs work is if you brush the grass, that you let the loft of the club do the work, not that you're trying to do the work. So what is brush the grass? Ladies, it is simply this. When you make a golf swing, when you make a golf swing, I need to hear this. So if you couldn't quite hear it, it's a brushing of the grass. Now women say to me all the time, oh, Lisa, oh, especially my gardeners. My gardeners are bad. Oh, I don't want to make the grass look awful. Oh, the grass looks so pretty. Hey, there are phenomenal superintendents all across the world. And guess what their job is? To make the grass look pretty. They want you to brush the grass so that they can fix it. So here's the deal. Don't worry about making messes on the grass. Number two, women say to me, oh, it's going to hurt my hands or my wrists. I promise you it won't. If you just do a nice light grass brush, you'll be okay. Even just take a little strip of grass, a bacon strip. I'm Canadian. I like my bacon. Just a baby bacon strip. That's all you need. You don't need a big chunk of grass like you see on the PGA Tour or LPGA Tour flying through the air. Just a baby bacon strip. You just need to brush the grass. It's so, so important. Okay, so if you only leave today's clinic with three things, Number one, brush the grass. Now, how do you brush the grass? Here, remember I told you about bad pieces of advice? Number one for women, oh, sit in a chair, sit in a stool. Brutal, that's out. Here's the second one. Now, I'll start with bless their hearts. Often, uh, playing partners will say to their uh, spouse will say, oh, honey, uh, when they, they hit a golf shot, we've all been there, you hit a golf shot and it cold tops, it trickles along the grass, they're called worm burners, scald shot, whatever you may call that, it's just a, a low skinny shot, right skinny, and often your playing partner will say, oh, sweetheart, you lifted your head, who's heard that, yeah, yeah, throw me a, throw me a heart in the chat if you've heard, oh, you've lifted your head, you've lifted your head, because I know I've heard it before, right, so here's the deal, if you've heard that advice, brutal, Take it out. You know why? Because ladies, if I was outside right now, I would lift my head this high. I Look at all the hearts. Look at all the hearts flying in there. I'd lift my head and I'd hit a shot for you. And as long as I brush the grass, that ball's going to fly. Because guess what? It has nothing to do with brushing the grass. Here's the deal. What's happened is you've come out of your posture. So you've either straightened your legs. Can you see how I'm lifting a little bit? But more often than not, are you ready? You've lifted your torso. You've lifted your torso. So not your head, it has nothing to do with your head, but you've lifted your torso. So think about it. If you only lift your torso, if you only lift your torso one inch, that's it, one inch, you are now hitting halfway up the golf ball. If you lift just about two inches, you're barely catching the forehead of this golf ball. So think about it. It's only an inch 
inch and a half lift that's causing those poor shots. But when we see it trickle off the tee, when we see it barely go 50 yards, what do we think? Ah, oh, we suck. Oh, I'm terrible. Beer cart, beer cart. Hey, that's okay. Swing lube is always a good thing. But I don't want you to think you're terrible because you're not. It's just that you've probably come out of your posture by half an inch, an inch. So I'm all about fixes. How do we fix it? Ladies, this season, if you hit a low shot, a skinny shot, you've sculled it. So you've come out of your posture. You've come out of your posture. So how do we fix it? Here's the fix. What I want you to do, if you've come out of your posture, you've probably either watched this. Start it with your hands or arms. Look, if you start your backswing with your hands or arms, it makes you go out of your posture. Watch when I start with my lead shoulder. I go around my spine. Here's a great drill. Do this drill. Get into posture. Get into your golf posture and do this airplane drill. That will show you you have to stay. That's how you can brush the grass. This is what you can practice. And number two, this is the next thing that you say. Are you ready? You have to start your backswing with the lead shoulder and then say this to yourself. Butt out, butt out, butt out, butt out. And you're saying, what? Ladies, watch this. What happens when I come out of my posture? My butt comes in. My butt comes in. So if I think lead shoulder, lead shoulder, if my only swing thought is lead shoulder, and then watch this, butt out, butt out, butt out, butt out, I'm gonna brush the grass, I'm gonna brush the grass. So I just stepped on that by carpet as if, as if I was stomping down a divot. You know you golf too much when, right? So ladies, if you hit those low shots, start with your lead shoulder and literally say, butt out, butt out, butt out. I promise you, you will brush the grass, okay? Next most important thing, ladies, here's one more. You've, you've heard me say it before. Finish your golf swing, finish your golf swing, finish your golf swing. So many of you can add so much more distance if you simply finish your golf swing. So many ladies, when I watch them swing, it looks like this. They make a swing and then they stop about here. Hands are by their face or just above their head. Heel is barely off the ground. If your hands are there, you had to start start slowing down at, at, at the ball. You did not swing through the ball. You slowed down at the ball, and that's how you can stop your hands by your head. What is a proper finish? Ladies, in a proper finish, you should have all of the weight on the front side. The entire, I'm doing it this way, the entire back sole of your shoe. The club should be on your back. Club to your back, whole back sole of your shoe showing. That's how you finish a golf string. If you're not doing that and you're a slicer, that's another reason you slice. You're not finishing your golf swing. So swing all, don't, here's a good thought. No longer sw think swing to the ball. Are you ready? Swing through the ball, through the ball, not to the ball. Keep swinging until that club hits your back. And I promise you, you are gonna hit straighter shots and they're just they're gonna be more accurate and you're gonna get rid of those, that slice. Okay, swing through the ball. Here's a great swing thought as well. Show me some soul. And at the end of your round, Dirty toe. If you do this right, at the end of the round, the back shoe should have a dirty toe. Ladies who have been at my golf school, they take a picture of their toe and they'll text it to me. Look, Lisa, dirty toe, dirty toe, dirty toe. That means that you finished your golf swing. So finish your golf swing, finish your golf swing, finish your golf swing. Very last tip, because I know it's 5.30, or sorry, 5.30 my time, 7.30 Eastern and wherever you may be in the world. Last tip, remember I said don't leave with three, th three things? It's turn the shirt, turn the skirt. How do we turn the shirt, turn the skirt? And I'm just gonna say hi to Christine. Oh, you've been told you hit like a hockey slap shot. Hockey's good because you use your legs, but you just gotta watch if you leave too much weight on the back. And Caroline, thrilled that uh, you miss me when you're playing golf and that you think of my tips. That's what I want, ladies. I want you to all be better golfers. Okay, last tip here is this. This is for power and distance. This is the secret sauce for distance. I told you women tend to lift their arms. When you lift your arms, all you can do is drop them. No coil, no torque, no power. What do you have to do? This is the top half of your body. This is the lower half. You need to wind up from the top, unwind from the bottom. Are you ready? Lower body stays quiet. You wind up from the top, unwind from the bottom. So I like to say, turn the shirt in your backswing, leave it, turn your skirt or pants in the downswing. Turn your shirt, leave it, turn your skirt. If you do that, you are winding up and unwinding. Now women say to me, Lisa, I really struggle with doing that. So here's a couple drills that will help you do that. Drill number one of dissociation, are you ready? Put your arms across your shoulders, keep your hips dead, dead straight. Practice turning the shirt but keeping the hips straight. Turning the shirt but keeping the hips straight. Turning the shirt, keep those hips dead straight. When you've done that a couple times, leave the shoulders. Don't move the shoulders. Lift up your one heel, keep those shoulders square. Don't let the shoulders come with you. This is bad, okay? 
And then this one, keep those shoulders square, simply turn the skirt. Then you can do it number three in posture. What you'll do is start with your lead shoulder, the shoulder closest to fairway, turn the shirt, leave it, turn the skirt back to neutral. Turn the shirt, leave it, turn the skirt. One more drill. I learned this from Brian O'Neill, PGA of America instructor in uh, Orlando at my golf school. He's unbelievable, so I want to give credit to him. Is uh, This was a door case drill. So ladies, go to your bathroom door, a door in your house, hotel, wherever you may be. Hold the door frame. Hold the door frame. So that'll keep your shoulders. And then push off with your back foot. So righties, that'll be your right foot. Lefties, that'll be your left. Push. See how it keeps my shoulders straight? That will practice the turn the skirt because that's the hard part is the turn the skirt. And it's a turn, not a slide. Turn, not a slide. Once you get good at that, practice it in the real swing. So face away from the door, okay? Face away from the door. Have the door where your back swing would be. Start with your lead shoulder. Turn the shirt, hold the door frame, push off your back foot. Go back to neutral. Turn the shirt, hold the door frame, push off your back foot. Back to neutral and practice that. If you can practice those two things, I think the big key if you're struggling, start with the lead shoulder. It'll be turn the shirt. And then ladies, you have to, here's a little secret sauce. Get pressure into the instep of your back foot. When I lost that world title to Sandra Carlberg, I looked at my video with my coach, Paul Horton, and he showed me, Lisa, you got weight to your back foot, to the outside of your back foot. Power leak. You got to keep the weight to the inside, inside of your back foot. So turn the shirt into the inside. Even if you have to uh, kick that back knee in a little bit, turn the shirt, leave it, and then you're ready, push off. Push off that back foot. So it's push with the right butt cheek, or back butt cheek, should I say, sorry. Push with the back butt cheek. And I promise you, you'll hit the longest drives you've hit in your life, and not just drives every club in your bag. So try these tips. Ladies, I hope these tips are going to help you have the world's best golf season because ladies, we deserve it. I love that you get out there, fresh air, sunshine with our friends, with our family. Golf, it's such a great key business networking skill, but a great communication skill. And then also with our families, my son, my husband, my dad, when can you have three generations of golfers playing a sport competitively? Well, it's golf, and I love that I can do that with my family and with my friends. So it's time, just before we go, to talk about our prize. Ladies, I think this might help your driver. I think this might help your drives this uh, to kickstart your spring, right? Who doesn't need a new driver? Got some extra distance in here. So I would like to do a huge thank you to Callaway Canada, to Bruce Carroll, General Manager of Callaway Canada, for donating this incredibly gorgeous, brand new, newest, newest product from Callaway Golf. This is the Callaway Paradigm AI Smoke. This is what the tour players are going to be playing, have already played this season, the AI Smoke. It's got an adjustable hosel, and ladies, you are going to love it. If you would like to have it win this driver, all you need to do is like the Golf Town Facebook page, like this video, and you have to put a comment in, why do you love golf? Please just share with us why do you love this game? Because ladies, the more we can spread this joy, the more we can try to get more women to come in here, play this great game and find that joy for that lifelong living sport, the more happiness we can create. So ladies, this contest opens right now. So as soon as you like the video, like that uh, when we post it, it'll, you can like it as soon as we post the video, which will be moments after this ends, like the Golf Town Facebook page, but you have to write a comment what you love about the game. And this will be on Facebook only. We'll put this also on Twitter and Instagram, but the, um, the comment has to be on the Facebook page. Make sure you put a comment on the Facebook page because I want all of you to win this gorgeous new Callaway Paradigm AI Smoke Driver. Ladies, this Friday is International Women's Day. That's why we did this cl clinic. Ladies, we are fabulous. Ladies, we are warm, we are kind, we are strong, we are creative, we are amazing. Ladies, we are so much better together. Ladies, we do need to practice. Let's lift each other up all the time. Let's avoid the women in our lives and any people in our lives that tear us down because we wanna be women who lift each other up. Ladies, we are strong, we are confident, we are wonderful. May we be those women. May we know those women and may we, may we raise those women. Ladies, if I had a glass of champagne, I'd be cheersing you right now. Enjoy this week leading up to International Women's Day, which is on Friday, March 8th. Thank you to Golf Town for always wanting to celebrate women and wanting to celebrate women in this great game. Ladies, I hope I can start your golf season out amazingly well. If you want any more, more detailed tips, go to the Golf Town YouTube channel or Lisa Longball YouTube channel. Go to Playlists. 
Lisa Longball, and you'll find every single video I've ever done for Golf Town right there for free. So and if you want more detailed instruction, go for free to, to either of those YouTube channels. And ladies, big hugs. Sending you happy International Women's Day, you all. Bye.